to get lost, the word is. Getting lost when you go to places. When you travel, and sometimes people, I want to go and see the Eiffel Tower, I want to see the Beijing uh, Opera House. You know, I, I don't have those kind of, uh, uh, kind of plan. Look at my kitchen right now. I have uh, Amy from Korea, Paulo from Brazil, Hello. Brenda from China, and my chef uh, Jonas from the Philippines. He's, he's, he's Canadian born, but your background is Taiwanese, right? Nania, Lao Jia Nania. Hakka. You see, Hakka, you know, uh, they call them um, the moment of Chinese. They travel everywhere, the Hakka. They know everything. And of course, uh, we have Jok from Germany. And then we have Mohammed, and he's from uh, Bangladesh. You see, the, the whole world is right here. First, I like to figure out where is a great area to eat food. Then I'm going to figure out, I'm going to get lost from there. So, you know, I don't really have too much of a planning when it comes to that kind of traveling. You know, you have more, you know, options, the word is, you know, in the moment. You think about, you know, uh, you can do something amazing or something happen, might not happen. This trip is really about the moment, how I feel, uh, professionally, emotionally, to exploring and, and getting lost, I think is a great uh, feeling. Japanese breakfast is so complete, you know, it's full of protein, mostly seafood and also pickled vegetable and also soup, rice of course, it's part of the diet in the morning. But you know, this is like a, a great way to start in the morning. Look at this uh, miso soup with tofu, soup made of fish stock. So let me run through a few things here. This looks like Tofu, but it's not really tofu, but it mixed with egg to make it into like an omelet. Now you have uni, you know, on top of the egg tofu. Mmm, you can taste right in the ocean. The iodine, the sweetness, the umami. It also has a little bit of this sauce. It looks like, it's like pota potato starch being uh, mixed with a little bit of uh, seafood. Then I have mountain vegetable. This is like a wild burdock. Crunchy. With tofu and crab meat. Mmm, sesame dressing. You know, I think you know this really needed just a little bit of touch of soy sauce. You see this, uh, you see the color is so beautiful. So when you hit a little bit of soy sauce, you give a little bit of that you know, saltiness. Mm, this tofu is really good, very soft. This one, I would call it the um, Japanese of a surf and turf. You look at it, so beautiful. It's wild vegetable, definitely. When they're so small, they're delicate, lots of flavor. And also this tiny, tiny little, uh, little fish. Let's go in the salmon. <clears throat> I think they marinated to or soak in some kind of brine with salt already. So when they kind of lightly grill, I'm going through, you know, I can't stop eating because it's so good. I can't talk anymore. I, I got to eat, this is so good. If you look at Japanese taste, the word is uh, harmony. Harmony, it means 
you know, everything is not so sour, not so sweet, uh, not so salty. Everything is very kind of easy eating. Where is that old guy? Ah, check out the city map. So, you are here. Over there. Ah, what's over here? This friend of mine, well, we are colleagues, uh, you know, I'm talking about 19 years ago uh, when I opened uh, Chinois, he was my chef. And uh, there was in Singapore. So now I'm going to visit him, you know, uh, all these years. I see him once in a while in Singapore. He's a great chef. Tifu! <laughs> <laughs> Chef and I, 19 years ago, work at Club Shin. Huh? Oh my god, it's 22 years ago actually. One nine nine five. We start work on the menu. He's he's the best chopper in my books in the world. He's the best cutter. Chef, let's go in the Number kitchen. One. Let's go in the kitchen. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> This setup is actually is very much like Club Chinois when we were working together 22 years ago. You know, Chinese, we are really superstitious when it comes to kitchen. Now, this is what we call the feng shui area. You know what that means? Every welcoming the guests while steam is coming up. More customer. More money. More money. Yeah. More happy. I really enjoy working with him uh, when I was in Singapore 22 years ago because that was the time uh, is the first Chinese restaurant ever to make individual Chinese food. Me and chef uh, are designing the menu, eating individually. And now it's spreading all over China, all over Europe, all over the world. Albert's kitchen, you know, it's like feels like the old good good old days, you know, when we used to, uh, you know, making a dish, we try different way. So today, as you saw, you know, some of the local ingredients, uh, you know, not necessarily not necessarily work because because of uh, the starch content is different. Right away, we switch in a different method, so we're gonna make it work. So that's uh, what that's what we do. It's called challenge in the kitchen. You know, cutting is the easy part. To organize it, that's the hard part. You want to make it almost look like the card, they call, we call it. You know, coming into his kitchen, you know, in his environment, you know, I love the professionalism. Uh, I love the energy. I love the staff, you know, uh, to create a new dish, uh, you know, my signature of Singaporean slaw is actually happened in Japan, but with a Japanese touch. That's my 19 part ingredients right here. Today, we, we actually went to the market uh, we bought all the organic vegetables. And chef understand in Singapore during Chinese New Year. So we are very familiar with the, uh, the, custom, the custom of this salad. 
So let's build this. Let's build it. 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 They have different kind of radishes and also uh, carrot. Yeah, yeah, ten choy lah, salad choy, mazuni. If you look at the the house uh, in Japan, the ones they made out of hay, the one is almost like in Takayama when I was experienced in Japan. This is a house where they made out that hay, and that is almost that feeling uh, with the grass, with the hay, and building uh, the Japanese uh, style of housing. We're going to put more dressing on the top. So make sure that when you toss it, you have enough dressing. So this is great. So now, we have a little bit of uh, what they call the red radish uh, seeds, seed sprout, seedlings. Iziki seaweed, you know, you just have, uh, you know, around, so some uh, green onions. Seafood, not only chocolate. This, uh, I do a little bit more flamboyant. I just like, you know, it's like uh, autumn, you know, when the leaf is like falling. You know, this is, this is beautiful. So, the ziki seaweed, and I just want to put a little bit around the plate. So it gives that really organic uh, look about it. So guys, you know, here we go. Singaporean slaw in Tokyo. So Chef and I understand how to celebrate this dish. Because in Singapore, during Chinese New Year, that's how we toss. Low hay. Low yu hay. Low yu hay. Yes. That's, that's, the, that's the right way. See what he's saying. You see, all the same, what he's talking about. Oh, my God. 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 You see, Noah, what uh, we are doing right now, we're saying all the very, uh, very nice words. Prosperity, health, and also, uh, you know, make lots of money, of course. That's part of, uh, you know. See? low hay la. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. It's like party in your mouth. That's how I describe it. Why? Not bad, huh? Hmm. Really damn good. Those are singing. High five. Yes. Thank you. So we gotta try this. It's incredible. Amazing. This is a, a specially made Singapore noodle, right? The first I've ever tasted, but it's great. When we were at Xinhua, there was really the restaurant really make the revolution of uh, fusion in Chinese cooking. And during the time, you were talking about 22 years ago. That's how we establish, you know, be open-minded uh, uh, to, 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 with with tradition, but at the same time do a twist. And that's why he is so successful coming to Japan, because his mind is so open that he can actually survive. Being a Chinese chef can actually let Japanese understand his cooking and also adapt it to the local ingredients and his techniques and his food. And I think this is very special. Today, eating his food, you know, I can see the, uh, the journey had that he had because his food is precise, and also very local, cook in season, and at the same time, that 
word is a very great harmony, which is in Japanese cooking. Not overly too sweet, not overly too sour, not overly too spicy. So you know, you know, the journey is so great. Uh, he is really, really uh, you know, one of the master can really kind of, uh, you know, changing some of the uh, tradition to adapt, uh, you know, to where he is. You know, sitting down after lunch, uh, we can talk about food for a few hours. Only to I go hacksy go so far go do I say ma. You 坐咗好多年啦。We've been sitting in that booth for so many years. Yeah. Again, we're back to this. Talk about food, culture, changes, fusion. So awesome. You know, it's so great. Uh, you know, when you are in a, in a building, there's so many different restaurants. You know, we don't know where we are. We just really want to try out everything. I like to, you know, to experience the word is while I'm here, especially when you have mochi when it's fresh, it tastes so different. You know, they're they're more stickier, they're more al dente. The rice flavor is there. That's why I'm here. You see, this is, uh, you know, what they says. Uh, this is only in season. Oh, this is the same earlier. We yeah. are ah. yuzu. Yeah. I see red bean mochi. Oh, a very nice texture because the mochi was very soft and also the red bean is uh, sweet. I find it a bit too sweet for me, but the lingering part was very good to use. I like jellies, I have to say. When I was a kid, my mom used to make jelly. Well, you see this? You see this movement? That's umi jelly. This is always, I love jelly since I was a kid. Water. One direction, umi. It's not like this. It's only one, right? Well, I think it creates the... Uh, oh, you see? It creates the lightness and also uh, almost like the, uh, the texture, you know? You see, you know, drinking tea with a bowl, the best thing is because of the nose, it sticks in. It's, it's like having, a, you know, drinking cognac in one of those big cognac glass. Temperature is good. Let me check this out. I can taste the, uh, you know, the pit of the uh, the ume, a little bitter. The bitterness tastes quite nice, actually. What is this? Honey? honey. Is it honey? Um, matcha green tea sauce. A oh, green tea sauce. Green tea sauce. Mm -hmm. Matcha green tea syrup. You see, you know, uh, it's so different. You know, once this thing, you know, when you are packaging, shipping to another country, it's not the same. While well, it's fresh. Sticky, mm. texture al dente. You know, like eating mochi is all about the quality of the rice. You know, when you have uh, uh, when the quality of the rice, like making sake, if the rice is good, it means you got good sake. When the rice is really good, it means you get really good mochi. <laughs> I think this is it, no? Yeah, this is Yeah, your guitar. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. You found it.
they just left one bone. The rest is actually deboned. The skin is very crispy. You see? Kind of salty, but nice marinade. Yakitori, you know, can make you drink, you know. Can, can make you drink. You got salty. Wow, you got a pretty big chicken there right here. You see this? Ginkgo nuts. Ginkgo Mmm, I love this. It's a Chinese yam. A Chinese yam. Thank you. You know what's really good? Make congee. Congee is good. And uh, when it's really fresh, this is uh, sort of like the youngest, uh, you know, ginkgo. Because when it's getting old, it gets very starchy. This one is very crunchy, you know? Mmm, I love it. I think I'm going to order more. This is a very young lily. Before they actually turn yellow and open, when it's starting to open, it gets very, uh, I would say, not as sweet, but this one is sweet. Look at look at the way they actually, uh, from big to small, you know? Even something is so simple, and they do a perfect job. Look at this. Love it. In many cultures, you know, to bring joy, to share the, uh, you know, the passion of knowledge of food, you know, and I, I think it's one of the greatest subjects, you know, in, 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 uh, in, in humanity. You know, it's such a positive thing, you know. So, you know, loving eating great food and feeling good, I think is so important. I think it's, I think it's such awareness, you know.